video request the other day for a reaction on the UCI World Tour calendar. Um, obviously, first of all, this is only UCI World Tour calendar. There are many, many, many more races that are going to be on during this time. Uh, firstly, Tour of Britain and some other ones. But anyway, we'll we'll, we'll, st we'll start from um, the the top. We'll do men's and then we'll do women's. So, Strada Bianca, good one day race, fair enough. Getting on Pallone. San Remo, no one's going to do Pallon because there's Dauphiné and then Tour de France coming up. Ride London Classic, how that's managed to sneak in there, I'll never know. Fair enough, it has like the biggest prize money in one day racing, but it's just not a good race. Um, Dauphiné will be pretty important, most people were targeting that. Do the national champs. I heard the European champs got cancelled. Maybe they haven't. I know, sorry, I know they got cancelled. Maybe they're rearranging, which is a bit odd. So you think most people do Dauphiné, go into the Tour. And then world champs. No one's going to do these ones um, because, like, best rider is going to do Terreno or Tour. Sorry, Tour first. Terreno will be like second tour, second tier GC contenders and like random Spring Classics boys. And then they'll just be Quebec and Montreal. Like, obviously, some riders really like them, but I think they're not going to be very popular. Plus, going to Canada, quarantine issues etc. World Champs overlaps, but none of the men's does. The time trial's been moved, so obviously anyone who's decent um, World Tour rider will be going time. Will go into the World Champs. Bink Bank Tour looks like it's been shortened significantly to two days, which is a, a real shame, um, and also clashes with Flash Malone. I guess, to be fair, not many people do Bink Bank and Flash necessarily. Bink Bank's obviously more of a, you know, it's pretty much a GC race for the Classics guys like um, Spring Classics more than sort of the Ardennes, uh, which is where Flash Wallonne is. And then you've got, so like if we think about it in total, August is, you know, a little bit chaotic, but you know, people want to do Pallone, Dauphiné, people want to do San Remo, obviously, like, you know, it's not, there's a bit of overlapping. The Britain Classic West France, that's a really good race. I really, really like that race. The way that it's set up, the finale is always super interesting and the people who win it are always super interesting. So I think, you know, August, if it all goes ahead, obviously this is, preface by it, it all goes ahead okay september not too busy tours on fair enough terreno gets screwed not too badly though not too badly i mean i think it's not going to be as good as terreno in the past but in terms of names but it could be more exciting racing that's the other thing and then flash is fine bink bang gets slightly screwed but you know none of these races apart from these two but you know i think that they're just lucky that they happen to um go ahead in the first place and then it's just October is just absolutely mental. So, firstly, you have the Giro going on during how many monuments? One, uh, two, three monuments. Right, so that's not ideal. Um, that's going to mean if you're targeting a lot of the monuments, you won't be going. Or you won't be going for all of it. So, I think the main issue is actually... Liège being here, and Amstel, because you think Flanders and Roubaix, classics guys are going to do Giro, go into that, fair enough, but, like, otherwise, people might want to do Liège, but, or Giro, but they can't do both, because obviously it's so early on, like, if Liège was on the first, let's say, then maybe more people do the Giro, they get Liège out of the way, and then, you know, that would be their big monument, so anyway, Giro, I think, is going to get be in big trouble, um, obviously the route is quite time trial heavy, um, I believe, um, which is going to be good. Um, interesting to see who goes. I think you're going to get second tour GC, second tier GC contenders going. Um, you might get some people going from the tour to like domestique at the Giro. Um, you know, I can imagine in bigger teams like Ineos, they might have Carapaz at the tour, gaining some form, maybe going leader for Giro. And then you might have other guys like Garrett Thomas doing tour, doesn't win that, might go Giro. But you also might get people going for the world because obviously it's further, further along. But you know, it's it's not good. Then you've got. And Doisdorf Landrin. Obviously, these names are in French, uh, so no one actually calls it Traverse La France. It's um, Doisdorf Landrin for most people. You know, that's obviously a good warm up race for Tour of Flanders. You've got Gem Webel Gem. That's a bit weird bit being there, but again, you look, it, it's like one of those things where if you're a classics guy, like if you're riding the Tour, you've got quite a good training block. But if you don't, you're like, how am I going to get enough race days before? Like, yeah, I guess you could do Pologne, Dauphiné, and everything. But it's going to be really tough to sort it out. And Giro, I just think, is going to get screwed. Welter, I think a lot of people do tour well to double um, because it makes sense. Um, but I guess you've also got to think about next season as well. If you're doing the Welter and finishing in November, you're not going to be in great form. Like, you, if you have a rest, season, rest time, you're, like, you're not going to have much rest. It's going to knock on to the next season for sure. Um, 
so I think, yeah, it, it's a very interesting uh, race for sure. And then Duisdal Brugge de Pana, that's a pretty good race. It used to be a good three-day stage race. Now it's got screwed by Flanders Classic, so it's now a one-day race, which is it's not super exciting. And then obviously you've got Flanders, Roubaix, Lombardia on the on the weekends, which is going to be unbelievable to watch. But again, you know, Welter clashing with Lombardia again. Like if you're Bernal, come out the tour, don't win it. You're going to do the Welter, but then you can't do Lombardia. So you know, it's it's going to be very tough for people to decide. People are really going to have to be like GC or stage races and decide early. Obviously, if you're like a Spring Classics lad, like you can't do the Welter, which maybe is disappointing. A lot of people use the Welter for like preparation for next year. But I guess you can, you know, it, it's going to be weird because you might do the tour, then you do these one day races and then that's it. Like you're racing for the year isn't going to be much. Like you're not really going to, I don't know, I think the whole thing is is very confusing. Tour of Guangxi, I don't know how that's managed to cop a place there because literally out of the Giro, Tour of Flanders, Welter, and the Tour of Guangxi, like that's a four program. Like how how are teams going to have enough riders to run four individual races? I just don't understand how people are going to do that because you think Giro you need seven, Tour of Flanders you need six, so we're getting thirteen. Welter you need seven, that's twenty. Tour of Guangxi you need six, that's twenty six riders. Most teams only have twenty seven or so. That means every single rider is going to be like racing. And I mean, like, that is mental, because otherwise you get fined. And I think the Tour of Guangxi is going to have to, like, reduce rider numbers or something, because there's no way that people are running 27 riders, or 26 riders, I think I calculated. That's mental. No, sorry, it's more, because the Giro is eight, isn't it? Giro, the Grand Tours are eight, sorry, and the other ones are seven. There's eight and eight is 16, Tour of Flan is 25. Man, it's not going to happen, is it? Unless Guangxi gets down to, like, four or something, there's no way people are going to be able to send a full squad there. And also, the quarantine issue with going to China... Like, does China have Corona? No one knows their figures. It's going to be interesting. Um, Roubaix again. Roubaix after Flanders. Okay, fair enough. That that brings some sort of consistency. But the build up to it is there's no E3. Um, there is Ghent. Luckily, um, I think you know. But you know, Ghent isn't really like E3. Ghent is different in terms of the fact that it's hard climbs, but it's not the same as E3. However, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how people prepare. Um, in my opinion, I think it's going to suit. I was listening to podcasts that Garen Thomas and Luke Rowan Cav were doing. Cav was saying, like, it suits climbers more having this time off. And I think he's right, because, like, the race rhythm is less important for the climbers. Obviously, it's important, but a lot of it is, like, in the tour, like, okay, you need to do those nice, sharp accelerations, which you only have with racing. But a lot of, you know, the long efforts, you can do that in training. Like, obviously, mentally, you have to be tough, but it's not impossible. Why, if you're, like, a classics man, like, trying to do those really punchy efforts for, like, 240K, like, you can't do it in training because mentally it's just too tough. And maybe you're going to say, well, you just have to get a motor pace out and just motor pace around the Tour of Flanders. And maybe you will. But in my opinion, I think it's going to be really, really tough. Um, and also, I think weather is going to be interesting as well. Will it rain in Roubaix? People always say October is terrible weather. I actually find October can be very, very good weather. It's very polarised. Obviously, hill climb season is this, so I'm quite used to the weather in October, one could say. Obviously, northern France is slightly different to southern England, but it could be a wet Roubaix. Lombardia is going to be mental if anyone turns up to that. I guess Giro Lombardia. I get. I mean, realistically, the conclusion of the men's calendar is you've got to pick what you're going to do early on. You're either doing classics or you're doing stage racing. You can't really do both. Um, you can't do like the classic build up where you do all the spring classics, then get into the Giro, do the spring classics, have a race, then do maybe like Basque Country and rest, Dauphiné, then tour. You know, you have to choose early on what you're going to focus on. Italian race got screwed, Terreno screwed. The only one that's not screwed is Strada Milan San Remo. But Strada might get screwed because it's too early and Italy doesn't allow it. Lombardia is also not in good condition either. So Flanders Classics have done all right out of this. They organise all the Flemish Classics. Um, ASO have obviously done well because they're the tour. They have all the money. Um, and then yeah, RCS who organise all the Italian races are slightly screwed. Um, we'll go over to the women's, women's calendar. And it looks obviously a lot less crowded. That's generally because the World Tour, I believe, in the women's doesn't have as many races, like there's more races that World Tour teams do that aren't World Tour, but well, obviously in the men's, there aren't as many, um, like as in for the World Tour teams, most of the races they do are World Tour, um, but also like in here, you've got like Tour of Britain and other random stuff, which, um, you know, is going to be chaos to try and organise, because um, Tour of Britain is like normally September, so like they're not going to change that, I think, um, but maybe they'll have to. Um, so here again, you can see Strada Bianca, same day, that should be fine, like, you know, all these, there's no clashes, so I think you know, these are both, 
I don't think, I think these races are normally around this time. Tour of Norway, National Champs Europeans, Plouwe, Le Course. Oh yeah, that's, that's always going to be a classic race. But like, they might over, you know, they'll, they'll organise it so hopefully everyone can do it. And all in France. I'm not sure where the European Championships are. I think it could be like somewhere random. To be, I literally have no idea. Um, Bulls Ladies Tour again, no clashes. Giro into World Champs is going to be interesting. Um, the Giro normally is like, you know, the similar time to the Tour. Um, like, you know, so it's quite, quite different. Normally, I don't think there's normally a women's stage race. I think there might be Norway before the World Champs. But anyway, um, it's going to be interesting. Flash Malone, again, not too many clashes here. Um, Liège, Amstel, Ghent, all good. Flanders. I think Tour of Guangxi women's is new. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure it is. Split days here. Um, not too crazy. Tour of Chongming Island, that's been there for ages. And obviously the big one, the Paris Roubaix. That's that's great news. Um, it's really good to see that they've actually decided to have a women's Paris Roubaix because I don't really know why they didn't before. Um, but I think it's exactly the same day. It's the 25th. So, you know, it could really might have screwed cycling in some days, but women's Paris Roubaix, I think everyone universally is saying that's a, that's a class day out. Uh, it's really good that they've got that in the calendar. Um, it's going to be super interesting. I was, again, Chloe Dargett. Thought she's going to win, but not, can't do it because her team's not UCI. Hopefully they'll make an exception, but knowing the UCI, they definitely won't. Um, so my money's probably on a big TT. TT last, maybe like Van Vluten or someone like that. Um, or maybe a sprinter, maybe someone like Chanel Vap. Maybe Veebs could get round. A big pick. Um, and then to finish is this Madrid challenge. Not sure there's this format. I know sometimes it's been crits, but, you know, like... I think the women's racing is sort of better than the men's because it's just not so chaotic and it follows more of a structure. You've got some stage races to begin with. Um, well, you don't really have a stage. I, I don't really understand if these are the same thing or not. I think they're separate. Um, but you've got Tour of Norway, then you've got a couple of one-day races, two stage races, World Champs, and then just one-day races for the rest of the year. So a couple of stage, like two-day stage races, but not all three-day stage races, but nothing crazy. And I think that makes sense. It's not going to, like cause chaos of the calendar, they got some nice races, like this block here will be good in October, you have like Liège, Amstel, Ghent, Tour of Flanders, it's a shame they don't have like Dwarves de Flanders women's and stuff like that, um, but maybe they aren't world tour, but I'm pretty sure they would be, um, but maybe like other organisers will step up and deliver um, for the women, I'm not sure, because um, like, you know, obviously a week gaps is quite a lot normally, and this time there's lots to be raced, I mean Belgium, Netherlands love cycling, so you never know, they might be able to sort something out quickly. Um, but yeah, overall, women's calendar, I think, looks looks very good. It looks uh, definitely a lot more, less chaotic than the men's, which I think is just going to be mental. I still can't believe there's going to be four race days. Um, yeah, and obviously this Sunday as well, I've got to know this is going to be Giro, Final Days TT, Paris Bay, men's and women's, and Welter Tourmalet stage. So yeah, that's going to be pretty mental Sunday. Um, so yeah, it should be good. I think realistically, you still don't have much choice. They've got to throw together a calendar and hope for the best, to be honest. Um, we're going to see what's happening. I think a lot of races aren't going to happen uh, due to Corona, um, which is a big shame. I think the tour is going to happen because it's just too big and cycling will be putting massive amounts of pressure on the French government. The French government will also have a lot of pressure from ASO because ASO are like, this is really important. And the French government itself will have a lot of pressure from each individual region because they pay a lot of money to have the tour. The tour brings a lot of tourism. Okay, this time it doesn't. Like normally, if you're in Alpine town, you pay for the tour because then it comes through. People are going to stay in all the, all the ski resorts that are normally empty in the summer. Obviously, that's not going to happen this year. But again, for tourism, I think it's pretty important in the future to have the tour going through your village or a town. Um, start towns pay a lot of money. So I think the tour has to happen. Um, and then after that, I don't know. Um, Giro again could happen. Worlds is like. If it's not second or third wave by whatever wave we're in, my Corona Welter could happen. Um, hopefully Swedish races, well, this one could happen because Sweden seems to be all right. Norway again, don't have too much Corona. Um, Tour of Guangxi, Tour of Chongqing Island. Just depends about getting out of Europe and what the, what the restrictions are of leaving Europe and stuff. Um, anyway, what are your thoughts on the UCI calendar? you excited about it? I mean, I think everyone's excited to see some racing, but I think it's going to happen like full stop will races happen and also just like what are people going to do like what strategies will each rider have will gc contenders who normally you know come fifth in the tour might be like you know what sack off the tour i'm going full for the gear especially with a strong tt you might be like hmm, 
can imagine Moloman just going, I'm going full Jira, mate. I'm not bad at the TT. I could win this thing because everyone's focused about the tour and the spring classics and everything else. Like, And then if you're Fugaz, you might be like, oh, Liege could happen because someone else is going Jira instead. I mean, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's going to be very interesting to see what all the tactics are, who raises who. I think there could be some mind games going on. Like, you know, you're pretending you're doing Liege, you're actually doing the Jiro or vice versa. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, Flanders, Rubey, we all know who's doing that. Uh, actually, one thing I want to say is that the biggest shame is that the World Championships is happening here because it means that Mads Pedersen um, is not going to be able to wear the rainbow jersey for very long, and neither is Van Vluten. Um, like, she gets even less races, really. I mean, it's like pff, not many race days to be had um, at all. Um, I think it's pretty harsh. National champs, I feel less sorry for because, like, they happen to, they've already ridden the tour for the men or whatever. Um, so it's not too bad, but again, I guess the women's like you don't get a race in the Giro, um, in the Giro, uh, in your national champs jersey, which is pretty lame. And I just think, yeah, it'll be pretty, pretty bad if you were uh, won the world champs like Pedersen did or Van Vluten, and like you, you haven't even really got a race in that many races, especially like Van Vluten. And the thing is, Van Vluten could win it again, so she does get a race in the Giro as well, which is slightly better because obviously, like, she'll probably win that again. But like Mads Pedersen doesn't get race any of his biggest races like Flanders and Roubaix, so that's pretty lame for him. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. Corona's you know does what it does, and um, UCI has pretended to make a calendar, which I think in reality is just lob everything down and hope for the best. Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy, it. and uh, yeah, see you in the next one. Eh?